Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. My name is Dr. Jeff Le Reboron and this is our second pre-recorded lecture for the subject Nursing Care of the High-Risk Newborn to Maturity. And for this video, we will be discussing about establishing adequate nutritional intake, establishing waste elimination, prevention of infection, establishing parent-child bonding, supporting the developmental needs of the high-risk newborn, follow-up of high-risk infants at home, and high-risk infants and child abuse. So ilabas niyo na po ang inyong mga handouts and inyong mga ball pens so that we can continue with our pre-recorded lecture. Now let us also zero in on how we establish adequate nutritional intake in high-risk newborns. Now we always have to remember that infants who experience asphyxia during the time of delivery or those infants who have difficulty initiating breathing during the first few minutes of life are usually given intravenous fluids to prevent exhaustion from sucking. Alam naman natin, di ba, we discussed this uh, previously that when there is difficulty of breathing or fast respiration and uh, typically caused by asphyxia, what happens is that there is dehydration coming from insensible water loss. That's the reason why we have to inject them with intravenous fluids to prevent exhaustion, dehydration, eh, and exhaustion from sucking. Aside from that, if respiratory distress continues, so kung nahihirapan pa rin yung bata na huminga, gavaged feeding is introduced. When you say gavaged feeding, we insert an NGT or an, the nasogastric tube in the nose of the baby going to the stomach and that is um, the conduit that we will use to feed the newborn. Bakit po tayo gagamit ng NGT pag merong respiratory distress yung bata? Because we want to prevent the child from having uh, aspiration. Kasi nga po, pag nagsasaba yung respiratory distress tapos pinapainom natin yung bata orally, there is a possibility that milk can go to the lungs of the baby which can cause aspiration. Uh, you also need to remember that for preterm infants, they reveal hunger in the same fashion or in the same way with term infants. So, ibig sabihin, pag nakakakita po tayo ng rooting, ng crying, or sucking motions pag nagugutong yung isang term infant or term neonit, ganun din po yung ipapakita ng isang preterm neonate. These preterm neonates will also reveal hunger using rooting, crying, and sucking motions. Uh, on the same context of preterm infants, as much as possible, we should breastfeed them as soon as possible also. Uh, bakit kailangan natin silang i-breastfeed? Because we all know that for preterm infants, they usually have lower immune system. They have lower immune response that, predis that predispose them to infection. So when we best breastfeed these infants, there is a high chance that they will get the colostrum which will improve their uh, immune response or immunity. If breastfeeding is not possible, the, mad, the mothers can, uh, example, the preterm infant cannot suck properly the breast of the mother. The mother can manually extract the milk or use a breast pump to initiate and continue breastfeeding okay, until the newborn is ready for breastfeeding. Uh, lagi niyong tatandaan that if the breast, breasts are not sucked on by the neonate, uh, it will stop producing milk. So, kailangan natin ipamanually extract yung breasts ng mother so that milk can be extracted from it so that it will still be stimulated to produce uh, more milk once the neonate is ready for breastfeeding. So, yun po dapat yung tatandaan natin in establishing adequate nutritional intake for uh, high-risk newborns. Now, marahil ay nagtataka kayo kung anong gagawin natin sa na-express natin na milk from the mother's breast if the newborn is not yet ready to uh, breastfeed. Now, the expressed milk is usually used in the infant's gavage feeding. Ito po yung binibigay natin sa mga neonates who are in their NGT for their gavage feeding so that the neonate who is high risk, uh, who is not able to suck properly, can still get the benefits of the breast milk, especially the colostrum. Uh, aside from that, newborns who are gavage fed should always be given oral stimulants from non-nutritive sucking. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Dapat yung mga, mga bata na finifeed natin using NGT, 
should still be giving given stimulants to uh, orally stimulate the baby. For example, bigyan natin sila ng pacifiers. Bakit po ito kailangan? You have to remember that um, as we um, discussed last semester, these neonates are usually on their oral stage of development and they use uh, their mouth to explore the world, to be satisfied. Kaya nga binibigyan natin sila ng mga oral stimulants that are non-nutritive in nature so that they can still uh, be able to gratify the needs that they have during their oral stage. So, pag meron silang mga NGTs at nagsasak sila kunwari, so even though hindi naman siya nutritive yung binibigay natin, we can still give pacifiers to stimulate uh, the oral senses of the child. Uh, pacifiers and oral stimulants are not given to the newborns that are too immature to have sucking reflex because there are newborns who are uh, born before 7 months old who usually do not have sucking reflex. Hindi po natin sila binibigyan ng pacifiers or oral stimulants. What I'm trying to say is that there are still also age-appropriate uses of pacifiers and oral stimulants, okay? So, bakit natin hindi ito ibibigay sa mga newborns or neonates who have immature uh, age uh, who still do not have sucking reflex? Ayaw natin mag-swallow sila ng sobrang daming air, uh, especially if these cases have a tracheoesophageal fistula who are awaiting surgery. May mga bata kasi na pinapanganak who have an abnormal communication between the tracheoesophageal ah, the trachea and the esophagus meaning parang merong parang passageway na nagko-connect sa trachea and sa esophagus nila so usually we don't give these uh these neonates uh, pacifiers or oral, oral stimulants because they will just lead to um, swallowing too much air which will lead to distension of the abdomen so uh, be very cautious and judicious when it comes to giving pacifiers to uh, high-risk newborns. So, yun po yung lagi nating tatandaan. Now, we also look at uh, how we can establish or help the high-risk neonate establish waste elimination. Now, it is very important to note that premature newborns usually void later than term newborns. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Yung mga premature na newborns daw ay mas matagal silang uh, iihe or magvo-void compared to those who are term newborns. Sa mga term newborns po, we can expect them to deliver or to pass their first urine on the first 24 hours. Within the first 24 hours, ye expect mo na iihi na yung isang term newborn. However, for premature newborns, usually they void later than that. Now, bakit po kasi nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, voiding na mas matagal in premature newborns? Usually, for premature newborns po kasi, marami tayong ginagawa na procedures sa kanila, especially during resuscitation. So, that uh, alone in itself delays the voiding process. At alam din natin kasi that when there is prematurity, there is also difficulty of breathing. Therefore, magkakaroon siya ng fast respiration kasi nga mahihirapan siyang huminga. And what happens is that there will be increased in insensible water loss through the exhalation of the child. Maraming lumalabas na fluids din sa katawan ng bata which are usually insensible. So that leads to dehydration. At pag yung isang bata or isang neonate ay dehydrated po, you can also expect na madedelay yung kanyang voiding or micturation or urination. Aside from that, there is also delayed voiding for preterm newborns because somehow uh, the blood pressure of the preterm newborn may not be adequate or may not be enough to supply the blood uh, supply blood to the kidneys which we, which may delay voiding alam natin uh, as we discussed last time that when there is hypovolemia there are signs and symptoms of shock which include uh, hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypothermia. So, take natin yung una. Pag merong hypotension po yung isang preterm newborn, the BP may not be that strong. Kaya hindi po magkakaroon ng adequate supply yung ating kidney. Kaya po yung bata or yung neonate will have delayed voiding. So, those are the two reasons why 
the preterm newborns may have a delayed voiding compared to the term newborns, which is more than 24 hours. Uh, anong gagawin natin if we are faced with newborns who have uh, delayed, uh, delayed uh, what do you call this, uh, micturation or urination? The best thing that we can do is we have to carefully document any voiding that may occur during resuscitation. So, pag nakita natin during resuscitation that the newborn has already passed his first urine, you document it. Uh, patient voided at right a specific time. Bakit natin kailangang i-document yung first na voiding ng preterm na high-risk newborn? Because we want proof or evidence that the hypotension of the child is already improving and that kidney perfusion is already present. So, the voiding alone is already an evidence that hypotension or yung mababang BP niya ay nag improve na and that kidney perfusion is already getting better and that there are already blood going to the kidney. Kaya nga siya umiihi na. Alright? So, you always have to document the first voiding of the uh, preterm neonate during resuscitation. Aside from that, you always have to note that preterm neonates may pass stool later than term infants. Yung meconium po ng mga term neonates uh, usually are passed within the first 24 hours. Kaya nga po, a common question in the board exams is, what is the surest sign of a patent anus? And our answer is uh, passing of the meconium within 24 hours. Kasi nag expect po tayo, it is always normal for a neonate to pass a meconium on the first 24 hours. However, for preterm neonates po, it is not the same. Mas matagal po sila bago mag-pass ng meconium. At bakit po kaya ganito yung case? Uh, preterm neonates will pass meconium later than term infants because the stool has not yet has not yet reached the end of the intestines by birth. Kumbaga, dahil sa sobrang bata pa, preterm nga yung infant or yung neonate, yung stool niya, it has not yet reached the descending colon. Nandun pa lang siya sa transverse colon, kaya usually mas matagal sila na magpas ng meconium because the stool has not yet reached the lower end of the intestine. So, those are the things that you can expect during establishing waste elimination in high-risk neonates. Now, especially for premature neonates, it's also our responsibility as healthcare providers and nurses to prevent infection. Kaya nga po napaka-importante dapat ng uh, hand washing before and after taking care of these neonates and using gloves so that we will not be infecting or causing nosocomial infection to these neonates. Lagi niyong tatandaan na pag preterm po yung pinag-uusapan, usually uh, their thymus glands are not yet that developed. Kaya nga po mababa yung kanilang mga immune response. That is the reason why they are very prone to infection. Now, acquiring an infection once a neonate is still preterm can aggravate the high-risk newborn's ability to adjust to the extrauterine life. Preterm na nga, meron pang infection, mas mahihirapan po yung bata to achieve an, and adjust to the extrauterine life. So, ano ba kasing problema in, in infections during prematurity or if the newborn is high risk? Ang mangyayari po kasi is that when there is infection in your body, the demand for oxygen also increases. Bakit? Kasi kailangan natin na mag-produce ng maraming energy to produce more heat because sometimes kaya po tayo nagkaka-fever kung meron tayong infection because the body is trying to kill the pathogens that are inside our body. Kasi nga po, there are uh, microorganisms that uh, are killed using heat. Okay? Uh, kaya po, when we need to increase our body temperature, we also have to increase our energy expenditure. And kung mag increase tayo ng energy expenditure, mas tataas po yung metabolic oxygen demand po natin. And the problem with that is, usually, 
for high risk newborns mababa na po yung kanilang mga oxygen levels tapos tataasan mo pa yung demand so their body cannot cope with the demand so sabi dito the newborns cannot supply the oxygen demand needed by the body which will already lead to ox uh, metabolic acidosis so magiging problema na naman po yun, yung metabolic acidosis if there is infection that occurs during uh, high risk in the high-risk newborn. Aside from that, you have to remember that infection also stresses the immature immune system of the child. Okay, so that will compound the problem, leading the child to become more prone to having other kinds of infection. Okay, so as much as possible, we prevent infection by washing our hands and you are uh, keeping the the field that we use sterile or clean, and then. Uh, as much as possible, we prevent cross-contamination uh, by washing our hands before and after uh, taking care or giving doing procedures for one specific client. So, yun po yung lagi nating tatandaan as future healthcare providers. Now, as future nurses and healthcare providers, it is important for you to know and understand the common infections or pathologic or uh, agents uh, that may cause different types of infections during the different life stages of your high-risk newborns. Pag-usapan po natin yung mga uh, common infections that usually happen in utero. And we have uh, here cytomegalovirus and toxoplasmosis wherein the newborns with this infection are usually born with congenital anomaly. Actually, hindi lang po cytomegalovirus and uh, toxoplasmosis yung nagkukos ng mga congenital anomaly which causes high-risk conditions in the neonate. We have what we call torch infection. I know very well that you have already uh, discussed this or heard this torch infection from, uh, from your OB teachers. Now, yung torch infection natin, these are a group of congenital infections that are usually passed from the mother to the child at some time during pregnancy. Ibig sabihin, nangyayari po yung torch infections natin during pregnancy while the newborn is, uh, while the fetus is still inside the uterus of the mother. And it is from the mother being passed to the fetus. Now, during delivery, pwede din mangyari yung torch infection and even after birth. So, ano ba yung uh, torch? Bakit siya tinawag na torch infections? It, torch is actually an acronym which represents infections that are caused by different pathologic agents like, for example, Toxoplasma gondii, other agents like syphilis, parvovirus, varicella zoster virus, listeria virus, rubella, cytomegalovirus, and helpless simplex virus. Yun po yung mga group of pathologic microorganisms that make up torch infection. So, marami po tayong mga uh, disease conditions or common infections that are involved in the torch conditions. Now, bakit po natin kailangang pag-aralan ang torch infections? Because uh, knowing this may help you and the doctor diagnose the patient, especially if you see these signs and symptoms uh, in a high-risk newborn. Now, ano ba yung mga nakikita nating early signs of uh, torch infection? When a um, newborn has torch infections, they usually develop fever. There is also a development of a small head or what we call microcephaly. Makikita mo yung ulo po yung ng bata, maliit as compared to the rest of the body part. Uh, the neonate may also have low birth weight or mas magaan siya or mas mababa siya sa 2.4 kilograms which is the normal uh, birth weight. Aside from that, there is also lethargy or sleepiness, aglaladot, okay? Or there may be cataracts on the eyes of the neonate or there is hearing loss or congenital heart diseases. So those are the early signs that the high-risk newborn may also have been infected with torch. So uh, ulitin natin ha, fever, microcephaly, low birth weight, lethargy or sleepiness, presence of cataracts, hearing loss, and congenital heart diseases are all early signs of torch infections. Uh, aside from that, some newborns may also present 
with signs and symptoms including hepatosplenomegaly or the enlargement of the liver or the spleen. So makikita nyo medyo malaki yung uh, abdomen ng bata or enlarge yung abdomen niya and that may be caused by torch infection because nagkakaroon siya ng hepatosplenomegaly or the enlargement of the liver or spleen. Aside from that, uh, infected newborns can also appear to have reddish brown spots on their skin. So parang meron siyang mga uh, reddish brown na rashes which were are called petechiae or we also call them purpura. Okay, so pag nakakita po kayo ng mga spots na ganun sa mga bata na reddish brown, you may consider them to have a torch uh, early on in their uh, in their conception. Um, meron din tayong makikita na yellowish pigmentation on the skin or eyes which we call jaundice. It's also possible in torch infections or what we call the blueberry muffin rash which appears as a bluish or purplish marks on the baby's body. So, para siyang mga uh, Mongolian spots, which we call blueberry muffin. Um, blueberry muffin rash na nakikita natin in the different parts of the body. So, those may also be presenting signs and symptoms of torch infection. Now, when we speak of late signs of torch infections, usually, they occur during the second year of life. So, yung torch infection natin, para, pwede siyang mag-carry over up to the second year of life ng bata. And may, that may lead to vision impairment or vision loss. Pwede mabulag yung bata because of the torch infection. Pwede ding magkaroon siya ng intellectual disability. Pwede din siyang magkaroon ng deafness. Or the child may also suffer from seizure. So, those are the possible uh, signs and symptoms that we also see in neonates who have been infected with torch on their second year of life. So as much as possible, if you see the early signs of torch infections, you report them immediately to the doctor so that the neonate will be given adequate treatment depending on the cause of infection. So yun po yung magiging role natin to help the doctors detect these common infections so that we will prevent possible vision impairment or vision loss, intellectual disability, deafness, and seizure which are usually late signs of torch infections. Lagi nyo pong tatandaan yan that you always play a crucial role in uh, giving these children, these neonates, a better chance of survival or a better chance at life. Now, another category of these common infections are perinatal infections. Pag sinabi po natin perinatal infections, these are infections that are acquired from the vagina during uh, normal spontaneous delivery or vaginal delivery. Uh, ang common na mga nakukuha ng mga bata na infections or pathologic agents in the vagina are usually the group-based streptococcal uh, uh, virus which causes septicemia. Pwede ding candida infections which causes oral thrush or herpes infections, pwede din po yun. Or yung treponema pallidum or uh, chlamydia trachomatis which also cause neonatal blindness uh, secondary to, uh, what they call this, uh, neonatal conjunctivitis. Okay? So yun po yung mga tinatawag natin na perinatal infections which are usually acquired uh, from the vagina during uh, normal spontaneous delivery. Meron din po tayong tinatawag na postnatal infections which are usually commonly spread by healthcare personnel or healthcare providers who are in contact with the newborn. Nangyayari po yung postnatal infection after delivery. Okay? So ano po yung mga uh, dapat natin gawin to prevent this nosocomial or postnatal infection? As much as possible, all personnel who will come in contact with the newborn must observe precautionary procedures such as hand washing and gloving para po hindi tayo makapagbigay ng infection sa mga bata. Alright? So those are the things that we should know to prevent common infections in our high-risk neonates. Also, one of our prime responsibilities as future nurses and healthcare providers is to establish parent-child uh, parent bonding. 
Uh, we know full well that parent-child bonding is important for the mental state of the mother and also for the growth and development of the high-risk neonates. Now, pag alam po natin that the woman who is pregnant may have uh, a neonate which will have high-risk uh, conditions kasi nga meron silang mga predisposing factors that may cause high-risk neonates, we have to give them a tour at the neonatal intensive care unit so that if their children who is high risk kasi nga nakita natin na possible possible na high risk yung magiging anak niya so that in the event that that neonate is admitted in the neonatal intensive care unit the woman will already be more comfortable going to the neonatal intensive care unit kasi nga uh, sometimes uh, we fear what we don't understand or we fear what we do not know. Usually, pag sinabi po kasi natin na NICU or Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, ang iisipin po ng nanay ay, Diyos ko, yung anak ko mamamatay na. Okay? So, when you acquaint the mother of uh, how the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit looks like, at least the mother will be more comfortable knowing that the child is there for more care, advanced care and management. So, at least matatanggal natin yung fear sa utak ng nanay uh, once they hear that the child will be taken to the NICU. Alright? So, we can do that by giving the mother a tour at the NICU if we know that they have the possibility to deliver to a high-risk neonate based on their predisposing factors. Aside from that, you always have to inform the parents of the high-risk newborn of what is happening during resuscitation. So, sabihin nyo po, honestly, what is happening, what the condition of the high-risk unit is, especially pag nagre-resuscitate po kayo. It is not good to be giving false hopes to the mother. Okay? Huwag nyo sasabihin na, don't worry, misis, kayang-kaya namin yan, mabubuhay namin yung bata, kung hindi naman po talaga. So, you have to be very honest in informing the parents of the high-risk newborn of what is really happening when you are resuscitating or taking care of the high-risk neonate. Aside from that, you also have to include the mother in the care of the high-risk newborn. Meaning, kailangan natin biglian sila ng oras to allow the child, uh, the mother to wash the child, dress the child, or touch their child because um, this will make the child's uh, birth more real to them. Okay? Uh, malalaman nila ay nakaanak na meron na akong anak kahit na high risk yung anak ko my child is real because nahahawakan ko siya I am able to touch the child so ibig sabihin ma-establish ma natin yung parent-child relationship if we allow the mother to be able to interact with their children as opposed to uh, pinapanood lang nila tayo na ginagawa yung mga procedures na ito so again you have to involve the parents in the care of the child to make the birth more real to them. Aside from that, if we allow the parents to be more involved in the care of their child who is in the intensive care unit, at least it is it will be easier for them to accept the death of the child in case na may mangyaring masama. Okay? Mas madali pong tanggapin ng nanay na namatay yung kanyang anak kung siya ay nabigyan ng pagkakataon para mahawakan, mahagkan yung kaniyang anak habang ito ay nabubuhay pa. You always have to remember na uh, this is one way for us to help the mental state of the mother especially if they, are, they have children who are uh, at risk of dying. So, dapat bigyan natin sila ng chance to interact with their child so that it will be easier for them to accept death of the child um, just in case na hindi natin sila ma-save. Okay? Aside from that, we also urge the parents to spend more time with the ill newborn at the neonatal intensive care unit as his condition improves. There will be parents who will say, um, Sir, natatakot po akong hawakan yung bata or Sir, hindi ko alam kung paano siya uh, padedehin. They will not want to be part of the care of the child even if the child's condition is already improving. Bakit? Because they see the child as a fragile microorganism na pag hinawakan nila, baka mapatay nila or may magawa silang masama, kaya mas magde-deteriorate yung health ng bata. Now, what we can do is we can acquaint the parents of how to properly handle the child and how to properly take care of them so that 
if the condition of the neonate who is high risk will already improve, at least they will know how to take care of their young once they are outside of the NICU and once they go home after being discharged. So again, it's also one of our responsibilities as uh, nurses and healthcare providers to establish parent-child bonding and make sure that the parents are equipped with the necessary experience and, um, and skill to take care of their high-risk newborns after being discharged from the hospital. Nauyaban din lamang na napag-uusapan na po natin ang discharge of a high-risk neonate as nurses, it is also our responsibility to ensure that these parents or these families of the high-risk uh, neonate after discharge should have access to healthcare personnel okay, na available if they need help. Uh, so what we can do is we can give them the number of the nearest healthcare facility that they can call if in the event that they need help when it comes to the care of their child. So, bakit natin po ibibigay or bibigyan sila ng access to a healthcare personnel? So, sabihin natin, Sir, kung meron po kayong problema, meron po kaming nurse na, na nandun sa malapit sa barangay nyo, you can ask her for help if you need uh, help when it, or assistance when it comes to caring for your child. Bakit po tayo magbibigay ng ganitong uh, support sa mga parents? Because, uh, we need to do this because we want to help the parents feel more confident when it comes to caring for their child and to make them realize na even if they uh, they mess up or they commit a mistake when it comes to caring for their child or for example there is an emergency at least they know that they have a backup plan or that they can they have something to call for help. So, kailangan natin ibigay yung isang number ng isang nurse doon or isang healthcare facility na malapit so that they will have more confidence in taking care of their high-risk neonate. Uh, in the event that the newborn or the neonate who is a high-risk dies after resuscitation, what we can do is we should allow uh, the parents to look at their young or to look at their baby without being covered with equipment. Di ba po pag magbibigay tayo ng resuscitation, ini-intubate natin, binibigyan natin ng uh, mga IV line so that we can have conduits or channels to give the, or route to give the medications necessary for resuscitation. Now, pag napantay na po yung bata, wag na po nating hayaan that the parents will see the child with these uh, gadgets or these equipments attached to them. Bakit? Because the parents will only think, ah, nahirapan yung anak ko. Uh, kawawa naman siya. So that will only affect the mental health of the parents. It will make it harder for them to accept the death of the child. So what we can do is uh, we also reassure the parents that their newborn was perfect and that the newborn had uh, only problems when it comes to lung expansion kaya siya namatay and that it is not their fault kaya nangyari yung bagay na yun. So, we remove all the equipment that we have placed to the child and then as much as possible, ipakita natin yung normal na itsura ng isang neonate sa mga mongulang for them to easily accept the death of the child after resuscitation. Okay? So, that is also uh, one way for us to help the parents accept the death of the new unit. Also, we give uh, the parents emotional support after a stressful experience by uh, referring them to a counselor or uh, refer them to a priest or a spiritual advisor or just by merely staying with the patient and letting them verbalize their uh, feelings towards uh, the death of their child. Lagi nyong tatandaan ano, that we have a therapeutic communication that we can use as nurses. Uh, hindi natin kailangang mag-respond lagi sa mga sasabihin ng mga parents na namatayan. Uh, what we can offer is our presence. The mere fact that you're there listening to them and uh, being empathic of how they feel will, is already enough as a form of emotional support for that stressful experience. So, laging tatandaan, nursing is a work of art and a work of heart. So, dapat, pag may nakita kayong namatayan ng anak, wag nyo na pong susungitan, wag nyo sasabihin, Mrs., wag ka nang umiyak! 
gawa ka na lang ng iba or misis, uh, marami pa tayong gagawin, wag kang magdrama-drama diyan. Be empathic as much as possible. All right? Now, in the event that the high-risk newborn survives the ordeal or kunwari na buhay siya after resuscitation, our next uh, responsibility as nurses and healthcare providers is to promote the developmental needs of the child or support the developmental needs of the high-risk neonate. Now, what am I, tra- what am I trying to say? In, the, in here, we have to allow the high-risk newborns to catch up to their growth once they stabilize. Ang ibig sabihin po nito is we give them the necessary support, the necessary nutrition um, that they need or the necessary care that they need for them to be able to catch up sa kanilang growth and development. We have to give them proper stimulation. We have to give them the proper care and nutrition para sila ay mag-grow and mag-develop as normal, hindi na high risk newborns okay uh, when they while they are growing we have to give them age appropriate toys so pagbibigay tayo ng toys for them which are appropriate for 1 year old 6 months old and other things like that now you have to remember na kailangan magbigay tayo pa rin ng mga toys sa mga bata even if they were high risk before because play is an important aspect in the life of a child it is the child's universal language and because of playing the child will be able to develop sensory and motor skills which are necessary for them to be integrated in our society after they grow up so kailangan magbigay tayo ng age appropriate toys which are uh, appropriate for the milestones or the capabilities of the child para po makapag catch up sila sa kanilang growth and development we also have to give support to the parents before and after their discharge to so that they can begin to view their neonate as a normal being which is capable of doing things. Like I said, mga parents kasi matatakot yan to take care of their child or they will see that child as parang porcelana na statue na pag... Uh, Lagi nilang sobrang uh, iniistriktuhan, hindi pinapayagang maglaro, hindi pinapayagang lumabas, mga ganong tipo. Because the child was high risk, the parents might think that their child is delicate and fragile. Therefore, these parents will become very overprotective of the child, which may also affect the growth and development of the neonate negatively. Okay, so sabihin natin sa mga parents, ma'am, yung bata, yung anak nyo po, kahit high risk siya noon, you should still give them the proper or appropriate experience so that they can catch up with their growth and developmental needs. Alright, so i-convince natin po sila na dapat yung mga batang ganito ay trinatrato din na parang normal na mga bata who also need to experience life, who also need to play with other uh, human beings, mga ganong tipo. Alright, so those are the things that we can do to support the developmental needs of the high-risk newborn after discharge from the hospital. Now, it is also important for us to do a follow-up of the high-risk infants at home. Uh, after their discharge, if we have time, we also can go to the house of these patients, high-risk patients na naging pasyente natin sa NICU, and then look at the condition of the child. Uh, we can use this follow-up visit to assess the level of knowledge of the parents regarding the newborn's condition and development. So, anong gagawin natin dito? Bibigyan natin ng support yung parents regarding the continuing level of care. Kunwari, yung nanay is uh, after they went home, nakita natin na hindi pa siya marunong magpaligo ng bata or hindi pa niya alam yung mga iprepare na pagkain ng high-risk newborn, things like that. We can give the mother health education so that we can provide adequate support para kahit wala po tayo, the mother can still continue giving the level of care that we have once given while the child is under our care. Kumbaga, we are trying to create a collaboration with the mother to ensure that the level of care that the mother is giving is also at par with the level of care that we have given. So, yun po yung isang pwede natin gawin to do a follow-up. A visit of the high-risk infant at home to make sure that the family are giving the adequate 
care and support that the high-risk neonate needs. Another reason why we need to do a follow-up visit in the house of, or in the homes of these high-risk neonates is that we have to look for possible signs of child abuse. When a child kasi is ill or preterm or high-risk, the normal reaction of the parent is to protect the child even more than the average child. Like I said, uh, ang normal na nangyayari is that uh, these parents become too overprotective of these children. However, there are some instances wherein the opposite occurs. Ang nangyayari po is that there are parents who neglect these children who, have, who are high risk. Kasi sasabihin nila, nakakainis yung batang yan, ang daming naggastos dahil siya ay nag-high risk noong siya ay pinanganak ko or dahil sa kanya, nawaldas lahat ng mga pera na isang lahat ng mga ari-arian namin because of that. Some parents will be blaming the child uh, because of them being high risk. So, anong mangyayari? They will be abusing the child through neglect. Hindi nila aalagaan yung bata or sometimes because of the fear of the parents regarding the fragility or the delicateness of the child, ayaw nilang alagaan yung bata. They won't even touch the child. They won't even feed the child. Especially na alam nila na naging high risk ito. So we have to go and visit the child to make sure that the parents are giving the adequate uh, care that the high risk newborn needs. Kaya uh, kailangan nating pumunta as much as possible to check on our patients. Uh, there is also child abuse of preterm infants. Uh, usually, nangyayari po yung child abuse of preterm infants because of the separation of the child from the family at birth. Di pa nga po pag yung isang bata ay term or kung siya ay healthy naman, well baby na tinatawag natin, we immediately place the neonate on the chest of the mother. Di ba? Nahahawakan, nahahagkan agad yan ng nanay because of the EINC or the Essential Intrapartal Newborn Care Practices natin. However, kung yung bata po ay preterm or yung bata ay merong uh, problematic noong siya ay pinanganak or siya ay high risk noong pinanganak, what happens is that the nurses automatically take the child and place them on the ICU for resuscitation, for other care and management, mga ganong tipo. So what happens is, hindi po nahawakan ng nanay or nung family members yung bata agad-agad at birth because the child was separated from the family because of their high-risk condition. So, anong nangyari? Na-interfere po yung family bonding. The child and the parents were not able to create a bond, a family bond together. That's the reason why family members find it difficult to accept the presence of the child. So, anong nangyari? There is a strong possibility that these family members will uh, will abuse the child, will neglect the child. Kasi nga, wala pong nabuo halos immediately na family bonding between the two. So, again, we have to do home visits for our high-risk patients after discharge to make sure that they are receiving the adequate care that they deserve and that they are not being abused or neglected by their family members. And that concludes our discussion for the day. Nawa ay marami kayong natutunan sa ating topic for this uh, pre-recorded lecture. Now, I want you to be ready for a short quiz in your Edmodo classroom and the link will be sent to our official group chat in Facebook Messenger. To ensure that you have really watched the video up to the last minute, you need to prove to me that you stayed up to the last part of this lecture. Kailangan pong patunayan natin kay Sir Jeff na tayo ay nanood ng kanyang pre-recorded lecture at paano po natin gagawin yon. I want you to send me a voice memo of the chorus of your favorite song and then you should send that on our group chat on or before 7 o'clock p.m. of March 14, 2022. And for those of you who fail to send a voice memo of your favorite song on that said time, you will be marked absent. So that is one way for me to know that you really stayed and watched this video so that I can check your attendance. Again, maraming maraming salamat for listening and have a great day ahead. Keep safe everyone.
God bless.